Don in London, hello. It's October the 26th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol. And my behaviour could be equally addictive around people, places and things. Being with the right people in the right place, doing the right things, having the right things, wanting, wanting the right things, trying to fit in, be a part of whatever was going on, life and soul of the party, and then isolated in my own party, on my own, thinking, I don't know what I was thinking, probably feeling I needed to find oblivion because life was just too busy, because I kept saying yes. But why did all that happen? Why? Well, fear, putting on a brave face, ego, covering up shame and guilt about probably not feeling good enough most of the time. And often we see this in ourselves and other people, fear of life, just fear of life generally, and not comfortable in our own skin. So these days I am more comfortable in my own skin, more going on, more skin. And the good news is that life does get better sober, or rather life becomes what it can be sober as we open up to the world rather than closing down and relying on our own efforts to try stop doing something which no human person seems to do on their own, not very well, and find a sober way of life, by which I mean emotionally okay in the moment of now, dealing with our feelings as they are, coping with reality. This is where I feel most of the time I am. And if I can't do it on my own, I can ask for help. One of the greatest gifts in sobriety for me is learning life all over again. I've come to the conclusion that I don't know much about today until it starts happening. And that any knowledge and wisdom I have may not work today. So if it doesn't work, I can ask for help and say, am I on, on the right track with people who know me? And am I on the wrong track with people who maybe can give me some wisdom about next steps? And this applies in all areas of life. Emotional, spiritual as they say, they, whoever they are, I say too, because I know what spiritual is for me, living reality as it is, sober, and being open to suggestions from others about how I may proceed with whatever I'm doing. So what's made this possible? Well, from a 24-7 drinker with 35 years of experience, sorry, I'm just shrugging a bit because my back is hurting. I went out too much and did too much last Saturday. The consequences are three or four days of pain. You don't need to know that, but that's what I deal with. And uh, I have to wait and be prepared to wait until pain subsides and I can do some more. Can do, can't do, learning the wisdom every day. But it was a lovely, beautiful autumn day on last Saturday. So I took my camera out and did more than was really practical walked through the pain and now had to live with the pain for several days. So a bit of cabin fever here I suspect. <coughs> anyway, what helped me get sober wasn't me, well it was actually. I admitted I couldn't do it on my own, simple as that. And then I said it to a professional psychiatrist who said let me help you get dry. Uh, three weeks in a drying out clinic, charitable I have to say. Uh, no money in the bank for me to do that on my own. <clears throat> so very much putting myself in the hands of other people in order to get dry and then blew me down what did they suggest they suggested I maybe went to a fellowship called AA Alcoholics Anonymous the very last place on the planet I thought I would end up because the rules of life didn't apply to me for some reason according to my head which said I probably know better than anybody how to get people out of problems which I did do for many a year and help people and organisations grow for many a year. But in terms of my own personal outlook for many a year, it was clouded by thinking and feeling I needed to be the answer. And that became a problem because I didn't know the answer to my own situation with alcohol and behaviour. Obsessive, self-willed, know, knowing the right answers doesn't help when you're an alcoholic or an addict. Knowing what you have to do doesn't help 
because emotionally we are so battered by life we don't quite know where we are and what to do so thinking can help us stay in the problem because we think try and think our way out of it on our own because that's what we've been told to do stand on your own two feet be tough be strong and it's it wasn't cool to be vulnerable but I tell you what it is cool to be vulnerable because that means you're open to learning and vulnerability if you are asking the right people you'll get some good answers and help and support but if you're asking the wrong people they will disavow you as they say mission impossible actually it's very good connection mission impossible is trying to do it on your own this recovery lark being in recovery from addiction why do I say that well my practical experience of what happened to me over the years always always on my own resources until I burnt out and then couldn't do the good things that I could do mainly because they were the wrong things for me so in the tough world of commercial enterprise and finance played my part as best I could and reasonably okay at it I say that now because if I'd had my right mind or understanding of me as a person I would never have been there I got there because I was just plain determined sorted out how to do things and did them and practically worked myself to death because that's what I thought I ought to do and the rewards were high and as the risks were high the rewards were high and the rewards didn't do any good for me so my life is quite different different outlook different perspective different challenges on a daily basis so Alcoholics Anonymous has helped me form an outlook which is more free freedom to choose what is right day by day still make plans when I need to make plans still engage in ambitions but very practical ones where there are steps forward and not imagination forward we certainly need a vision of the future where we, where we may end up but we have to be practical and practical living is far better for me sober so what helped me in fellowship was the experience strength and hope of other people about how they live their lives from those who have nothing to do and don't need to have anything to do but just live because they've earned the right to do that from those who have plenty of money and nothing to do but are finding something to do and feeling better about it from those who are disabled and cannot do anything just now because they are emotionally and spiritually broken they can't work out what to do on a day-to-day -day basis and that's where I started and needed help so eventually that moment of clarity of asking for help opened the door to many possibilities in life where before there was one and I've been revived more than once which is not a pleasant experience and helped out of hospital straight to a pub in my case in some instances because the madness of addiction is it tells you you haven't got an addiction and you can keep on doing what you've been doing and you are immune to the consequences but eventually we realize the consequences is a shorter life and probably not only hurting ourselves through self-harm but hurting other people as well so the fellowship of AA suggested it was suggested try it out there are 12 steps to help me be an open honest willing person willing to learn more about what's going on get my feelings back and cope with now cope with today and then see where it can go that simple yet that complicated for a person who had been taught you need to know what's going on and you ought to be able to do this and I'm paying you to do it or you emotionally in relationships I thought I had to be completely knowledgeable about everything and probably I had a lot of knowledge but it didn't apply to every single person I would meet romantically and the women in my life were perfect imperfectly perfect definitely but they were perfect it was just me I didn't know how to be me so unfortunately I wasn't able to connect too well and it is all that connection 
and growing and loving and developing relationships together. We all start out thinking we need to be perfect these days and we forget the journey. The journey is where love resides, not in the ending. There's cherishing at the end and along the way that we have to learn everything each time we meet new people. Never say never. Mind you, I do think I'm past it now. For a lot of reasons. And um, I quite like my life the way it is. So my videos step about the 12 steps of AA, about the AA preamble, and I share about the AA pre preamble pretty much in every video, simply because it's the foundations and the starting point where we learn about recovery. And then some of my thoughts. And you know, I was reading the, oh I'll get to it in a minute. I'm going to do the AA preamble first, and it's on this little card here. I have lots of these little cards. I tend to give them to newcomers, not to scare them, but to say, you know, some of these words are very, very important because many people in the fellowship forget them. And I do sometimes when I feel like I need to tell somebody what to do. Oh goodness, telling people what to do never, never did any good. Sometimes within companies and organisations people get told what to do because compliance is required, rules, laws, regulations. But in this AA preamble, I want to make something very clear about rules, laws and regulations. There aren't any. So here is the AA preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship. Fellowship, not an organisation, or what can be called a society. A fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other, that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. So the common problem is alcoholism the solution is, as we find, utilising the experience, strength and hope of those around us and maybe adopting 12 steps, a 12 step toolkit. You don't have to. There are no shoulds, coulds, oughts. There are no rules, laws and regulations. So the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. That's it. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. So there are no laws, rules and regulations, and it's emphatically that way, so we don't block entry to anyone. But you will find people who think they know there are rules, laws and regulations, and there are certain things you can violate, and that's not true. It's simply not true. Otherwise the preamble wouldn't read the way it did, and the society or fellowship would have fallen apart long ago. There are no dues or fees for AA membership, which means if you haven't got any money, never mind. One day maybe you will, or m one day maybe you will just be happy having no money. Needs met, once forgotten. But we are self-supporting through our own contributions, so those of us who have a bit put, in, put into the uh, kitty, if you like, or the hat, to pay rent, tea, coffee, biscuits and literature, and some administ administrative costs across a global fellowship. But we only ever have a prudent reserve. Prudent reserve means money will never be an issue. And as anyone who's been a treasurer of a meeting or group of AA, you'll find that funds can be very scarce and we just have enough. Next, AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Problem is though, everybody in AA has affiliations of one sort or another, and we can talk about them incessantly and believe that we are right in our outlook. But it doesn't mean our outlook is right for anybody else. So nobody but nobody can impose their rules, laws or regulations of living on you. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And that all fits in with the daily reflection for today. And, you know, the fellowship is there to help me and everyone through the toolkit, 12-step toolkit, and understanding the traditions of the fellowship as well. So the 12 steps for open, honest and willing to live life as it is, feeling life as it is, coping with reality, 
and the Twelve Traditions is about unity, service and recovery. It's not about telling you what to do. But the point is, because everybody in AA has an idea, an affiliation, an understanding, some groups grow strong in some ways, and some meetings grow strong in some ways, and they have an emphasis. The good news is there are plenty of meetings about, and the good news is everybody in fellowship is there for one reason, to be sober. So although sometimes meetings blow a bit hot and cold in various ways of being emphatic, they do change through time, as does the fellowship. What you see on a daily basis is what you get. And the fellow fellowship, what you see is what you get. If you're attracted to w people's sobriety, you'll stick around. And if people have become dogmatic in their outlook around fellowship, you probably won't stick around. But hopefully you'll find a meeting where you can go. And people are free and easy in the, the strength of sharing experience, strength and hope. And not imposing their will, their ideas or as it's called proselytizing in some sort of political way persuading you to their outlook your outlook is your outlook the ultimate freedom to be yourself free of alcohol and with a set of steps which are timeless principles which work not for somebody else but they just work for you you can see how they work for other people whether they're happy joyous and free most of the time or if they're miserable dogmatic phlegmatic, unhelpful, tell you if you I will only help you if you if you let go to any length to get sober, which is a bit of a, a, sh a kick in the teeth actually. Are we willing to go to any length if we are desiring sobriety? Yes, we don't need to be asked the question, especially by somebody who may sponsor us. So we are going to some length when we first get to AA to see what it's like because we're desperate and want to stop because life has stopped working probably but some are reluctant attendees to start with like I was and when people started spouting will you go to any length I, I remember being said it said to me get as many phone numbers as you can and I got as many phone numbers as I dared get knowing full well I wasn't going to ring anybody at the beginning but then started to make friends with people who took my number and I could ring them and then I found a person who was willing to help me out with the steps and be my I suppose sponsor in a very loose way I was told that sobriety is a garment loosely fitting rather than a tight constrained one and I was very lucky to get to somebody who was willing to share how to do the steps and had a sponsor of their own and was willing to carry on helping even when life got tough in an emotional and spiritual way which is what the fellowship is all about it's not about material things or finance those things will sort themselves out one way or another some of us will remain needs met and some people will have far above that because that's just life so we get our needs met. Needs met, once forgotten, these 12 steps. So October is about step 10 for me, which is doing uh, spot check inventories, what's working, what's not working, and a daily inventory of what's working and what is not working. What disturbed me? What made me angry and resentful? And to an extent, I guess, I feel some of the anger and resentment that most people feel in the world right now about the way things are economically and the standard of life that most people have had to lower <coughs> and that gets on my wick for want of a better word but I can't do much about that right now except vote when I can vote for whatever pol political nonsense that comes along but emotionally I am impacted by those things and I've got more porridge and recovered I've got mice too, but I've got some mouse traps. In addition to the mouse man coming and setting some, because the blinking mice are still here. I think it's because it's warmer here than outside. Anyway, these are just sort of small trivial things which can trip me up. Most important is, how do I feel today? Bloody marvellous. Apart from the pain. Yeah, I mean, I'm used to pain. It's chronic, so it's ongoing, and chronic fatigue is ongoing. 
So when I get a good day, I celebrate. You know, on bad days, I cope. I cope on all days then. So today's daily reflection, and I love this, and I need to remind myself of it very often. One ultimate authority for our group purpose, and this is within the fellowship, groups of AA, the meetings of AA, there is but one ultimate of authority, a loving God as he may express himself in our group conscience. That can sound a bit weird, but I understand it very well. I'll just finish the reading first. When I am chosen to carry some small responsibility for my fellows, I ask that God grant me the patience, open-mindedness and willingness to listen to those I would lead. And I can take a lead by being the person who used to put the chairs out before his back gave way, the person who used to make the tea for three years at one meeting and should have only done it for 12 months, overstayed in that job, uh, a greeter in many meetings, supporter in many meetings, sponsor to one two, just here and there, just carefully sharing how the steps work for me and how to do them and that for asking them to get other advice on how to do them as well so there is a, a common understanding even going to a big book study is a really good idea anyway open mindedness and willingness to listen to those I would lead I must remind myself that I am trusted, a trusted servant of others not the governor, teacher or instructor God guides my words and my actions and my responsibility is to heed his suggestions trust is my watchword I trust others who lead in the fellowship of AA, I entrust God with the ultimate authority of running the show. And what that means for me is, when it says one ultimate authority, for our group purpose there is but one, one authority, a loving God. Now, I don't know where I am and whether my understanding of God is anywhere near anybody else's, but I do have an understanding of God which is based on truth, love and wisdom. The absolute truth which comes from the many. How to love, be loved back, so equal status and wisdom which comes from the many or just the universe the accumulated wisdom as we go along but that's not just simply paying lip service the group conscience of a, a fellowship meeting is the wisdom that people share about how we proceed as a group within the fellowship within the traditions so it takes the many to make a decision and the most important thing is if you're part of a group and ha have something to say, please, please say it. People may take no notice. Indeed, often we don't take any notice of each other and often we don't get anywhere. So things have to stay the same until we actually come to an agreement, which is entrusting the outcome to the group and not one person. So if one person has an idea, if it's a good idea, everyone can talk about it and then adopt it. But if one person tries to impose that idea through a backdoor process, like just starting to do something, um, either the group will let them do it or ask them and challenge them, hopefully, because we're trying to work open, honest and willing as individuals so that we can keep in unity, service and recovery. So that's why it's important. One, one ultimate authority, and it's not me it doesn't mean I let go and let God in the, oh I don't know what to do I'll let go and let God I have to keep on learning life so letting go is of letting go of self obsession over the wanting one thing I've wanted a, a better, better camera for three years so I've put it on hold for those three years and I finally got it but I still don't know how to work it which makes me want to go back to my old camera which makes me challenge why did I want that other camera in the first place is it back to old behaviour or is it a desire to improve my photography and it's a bit of both I realise now because I'm absolutely astounded at what it can do it can do things better than I can do anyway another part of me so obsession can come on anything and often, I mean, the reason why I, lo I love photography and taking photos of people is if we are there taking a photograph when, they, when a person is being themselves, not only do you see the beauty and the lines and the scars of life on the outside, but you see the loving person who may reside within, or not, as the case may be. And photography, it does capture 
a moment in time. And I love that. Men, women, every form of life, basically. There is something absolutely beautiful in natural images of people, places and things. Don't know why, that's just me and my life. I love it. But when I do it, boy do I pay a penalty sometimes if I go too far and don't take care of the fact that although I might not feel the pain immediately, a day later I can't walk. So I have to be careful, but I can't walk too far and uh, the old walking sticks come out. Hmm. Getting old. But I don't mind it. It's just, just me and my life. If I live today as best I can and I pop, it, pop my clogs tonight, what can I say? Well, it was a good day, wasn't it? You know, there's no loss as long as I'm living as best is possible. Not striving for the impossible, but the possible. Striving toward the possible. Letting go manic self-will, self-obsession and obsessional desires. Because if I want it too much, I'm not thinking clearly and I need help. So that one ultimate authority is not me. I'm not... You know, in relationships, often I felt responsibility, not only for me, but for the other person as well. But that's smothering, and it's not listening, and it's not really reacting and responding in a dual, equal relationship. So all you girls who ran away, well done, that's what I would say, well done, you did the right thing. And I didn't know my own mind, but I loved you, there's no doubt about that, I loved you all. We learn a lot as we get older. So, my thoughts this morning. Plans and day-to-day. Uh, -day. I need to make sure I have made every effort, every effort to see and put in action what I can do. So it's can do. As I reach out and open up, those who can help do. Practical and realistic can be fantastic in results. In other words, yeah, life can work out spectacularly or it can be a spectacular misery misery making moment but that's okay that's just life and i don't dwell down in the pit these days quite like i did before although i have clinical depression and it's cyclical at the moment it's okay when it's da dark and desolate i'll tell you about it as i reach out and open up those who can help do practical and realistic can be fast fantastic in results Letting go, self-will, having acceptance, living life on life's terms offers endless poss possibilities, no longer prisoner of my own making. So if I obsess on one thing, I'm shutting down to that narrow view. But if I share my obsession with other people and say, what do you think of that? So well, if you want to go that way, go that way. Have you thought about this, this and this? So I get the input of other people who build upon my out there thoughts where I think I ought to be maybe, or desire, or fantasize about, and they bring me back to earth. So my feet on the ground, sometimes my head in the clouds, and that's okay. I'm learning every day what's possible. But if I just shut out the world who won't play ball with me, and won't listen to anyone, not only do I have expectations, but those expectations are just resentments under construction, as we find. So the thing which got my goat this morning was really good. One ultimate authority. And it's not me. I am so pleased to be reminded of this simple and helpful fact of life. And true, too, for everyone on earth. So if I'm not God, you're not God. But we work together with truth, love and wisdom to find out where we may go. I do not speak for God, I'm thankful I do not speak for AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, or for you. The best we can do is share, experience, strength and hope. Wisdom will grow as it may grow today. So some things will work out and some things will be redundant. And if we let go of things which won't work out, we make progress. Never perfect. But for me, the present moment is the imperfectly perfect moment of now, where everything happens. This is where Big Bang always happens. This is where God is, if there is a God, or you believe in God. God is now. God isn't the future. It's now. 
that's the only place that God can influence and it usually happens through other people who work together and in good conscience for me the solution is letting go obsessive behavior persistent wants will lead to self-will running towards riot so the thing of the camera I deliberately left it and left it and left it I could have bought it three years ago stuck the money away and waited to seed waited to see if it would improve my photography or I needed to improve my photography so it was worth getting it and I still don't really know the answer to that so it's a, an ongoing situation but I left it a long time because there's a part of me which knows I buy things sometime and never use them but I am using the mouse traps I bought the other day I have to say letting go and sharing asking for help and asking for help means I do not fear my truth so if I speak the truth about you know what's really running around in my head people say come on are you sure or oh, actually that's a really good idea but you can't do it on your own have you thought about X Y and Z so it's letting people into the truth of me I mean sometimes it's about love relationships and I shared with a friend recently and he asked me about a person I know and I said I truly love her deeply but it's going nowhere other than friends and he said why I said you don't steal another person's youth and they don't need to be saddled with an old git, git like me he said you're very wise he said I wouldn't want to do that either and then he well we won't go into that but anyway the, the point is being realistic you know people need to have their space and grow no matter what so I think actually those things are timeless it's a, an, an excuse based in fear but also a reality that I am getting on a bit and I'm glad I am I have a lot of memories cherishing memories which will not go away so letting go and sharing asking for help means I do not fear my truth I get help and wisdom from people needs met the wants go away redundant in this extraordinary world so if my needs are met it's extraordinary for me just for today extraordinary ordinary and there's more on my blog god I didn't have put some words in over the years so there's quite a few there which I'm not going to share but they will be on the blog if you want to read them I don't feel very constrained today emotionally or spiritually so how am I feeling okay why because I'm not God and I don't want to be and I don't want to speak for anyone else but me and that's something to do with fellowship as well the fellowship we are all unique authentic people each with an outlook each with a voice and people choose to share where they will and that's really important I'm not telling each other what to do it's equally important and there is no such thing as a violation a law or a rule in AA we observe what we feel is correct and right and in the main we all do it the same way and the reason why I share on my videos about recovery is because I'm enthusiastic about it but I'm also practical in what can and cannot be done together we find sobriety on my own I was struggling and I preferred not to wake up so many different times of day living in a bleak black desolate place suicidal definitely but hoping that all my relatives would die soon and quick so they wouldn't have to think about me being dead so it's sort of not selfish but selfish selfishly wanting to die but not wanting to leave a wreckage for everybody else to deal with and wonder had they, had they done this that or the other would it have made a difference and the answer would have been no so I have deep gratitude for being alive not only for myself but the fact that I found my relatives love me and other people love me and I love them but I don't drink one day at a time and I don't really obsess about it beyond these videos but the videos have a place in my recovery and asked and answered I did them till when I'm not quite sure I think they've just about served their purpose and I was, I've tried to make them timeless and in context month to month 
step to step, year to year to year to year. It's enough, I feel. We'll see. The serenity prayer, which guides me in the can do, can't do, day to day. What I can do, change my attitudes, outlooks and behaviours. Never say never to anything, but say no to what I don't want to do, because it's okay to say no. So I can change me, my attitudes and behaviour. I cannot change you, your attitudes and behaviour. That's your job. But I can share what's working for me, so that's why I do these. Can do, me, can't do, you. I'm not God. So when I say the serenity prayer to God or in good conscience, whether I was an atheist, an agnostic or a believer, and I've been all those things in my life, depending on my life experience, and coming to an understanding that the universe is full of wisdom in the most spectacular ways I never expected because I'm open to learn with humility. So the serenity prayer always has a message for me whenever I recite it in my head when having a tooth out, getting a virus and type 1 diabetes or simply closing my eyes in a meeting and listening to something beautiful somebody says or listening and understanding the tragedy of something that somebody says and feeling it as it was for me I can't feel on another's behalf I can't feel your pain I can't feel your tears but I understand why they're there so to God or in good conscience God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change courage to change the things I can and the wisdom to know the difference for me always in the moment and just for today.